Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, today what we're going to be looking at is creating an example like this where you have got a metal frame with a checkered black, a uh, checkered dot background and that means that it's simply transparent. So that way we could put that wire image over the top of any other image and it would look like it is see-through. That's the goal. So this is the finished product. So we'll get into doing it from the start. Here we go. So we're going to go File, Open. You're going to find your file. There is heaps of examples of these on the internet. However, you can take your own. So we've just opened it up. You can take your own. I took this this morning. I just simply put a blind. It actually was sort of a brownish, beige-ish blind. It wasn't white. It should have been white in the background and took it when in low light. So that doesn't have a lot of harsh shadow. So you can try that as well. So this is also goes in combination with your see-through frame. All right, so the first thing we have to do is unlock our background. You can see over there, when I click, there is going to be a lock and I've unlocked it. So now instead of it saying background with a lock, it is zero, layer zero. Now, just to be sure to be sure, what I do is I right click and duplicate layer, or you can go Control J, and we're just going to give another copy. Just to do that, just in case you muck up the first one, and so you're not re really working directly on your original at this stage. If you do choose to duplicate your layer, you don't have to click off the eye on the bottom one. That means we're just not looking at that layer. Make sure you're always on the top layer and how you know that is it's blue where you've clicked. So the first thing you have to do, depending on your image, is that you might have to adjust the contrast in some way because this is a little bit um, mid-tone-ish. So what I'm going to do is go Control L or Levels, Adjustment, Levels, Control L. And I'm only going to slightly do this simply because I don't want to over um, make this metal look too non-realistic. And I'm just going to push the blacks up. So, see what I mean? I could go quite crazy. Well, that might look quite good. Um, blacks up a lot and then bring the whites up, down. So I'm working with this bar here and this one here. And so what I'm trying to do is create mid-tone in there somehow. And we go OK. So that was adjusting levels. Now I'm going to show you the difference. I'll put this eye on of what we just did. Eye on there, eye off. That was what it was like before. That is like it's like now. That's after doing levels. And I use levels nearly in every photo. So control L is how you use levels. Always check your levels in any photos. Because it makes a lot of difference. So eye off the bottom one again. Let's get into it. So what would technique we're going to do to uh, take out the white of the background without having to individually rub out every single grid in there, which I really don't like to do and that's really like a waste of time. I'm going to simply show you a technique we can use. Here we go. So we're going to go up to Select, Select, Color Range. So you're going to go Select Color Range and this is the box it gives you here. What at the moment it's showing me is a selection that's that's the image there and um, it's got an eyedropper here which I'm going to click on. You are then to get your eyedropper and click it onto the white aspect of it. I'm then going to turn my fuzziness up and when I'm doing that you can't go too much because it's going to take some of the whites out of your wire. So we'll just do it in little stages. So you can, when I'm taking, so the fuzziness goes up and down. And what that's doing is wherever it's white means that's the bit's going to cut out. Okay, so it's not. If I had it on that, had it on that, it's not going to cut out much because mostly it's blacked. But it's going to cut out a bit here, and we're going to do this in stages. So that is maybe fairly good for this image, and I'm just going to go okay. What it's going to do is show me highlight, and sort of like running ants, and that means that that's that part of it's selected. 
I'm then going to go control X, control X, which means that it's cut out that white. Told you it was easy. So it's going to go control plus, just to have a view of it, holding my space bar down. So I can move around, see the hand. So I'm holding my space bar down while I'm clicking my mouse so I can move the picture around. And that looks pretty good. I mean, there's a few little bits, but by geez. Now, there might be a little bit more grey in this down that bottom area, so I'm just going to have another go. Select Colour Range. Click down here. Yeah, see, it's going to find a bit of that there. And go OK. And then Control X. It might have taken off a bit too much there. It's sort of tapped into the grey. So I'm going to go Control Z and take that back. Control D to stop it selecting. So there. So they're the other shortcuts you can use. Control um, Z is to undo. Control D is to deselect in case you have to go backwards. Um, all right, so we'll try that again. So I'm just going to go and try and select select color range and pick up some of these if there's any little grays there. Not too much though. So we're just going to see how that goes. See, I'm just putting my fuzziness right down because I don't want it to pick up on the grays on the wire. It already is doing that a little bit because you can see and go OK. And Control X to cut. Beautiful. So now you have a see-through image. So that's our finished image. That was our original. So now what I could do, I'm just going to show you, is go File, Open. Um, there's my background here, go Open. I'm going to show you how see-through it is. And you could do this to check it too. Drag my original, uh, sorry, not the original fence, where's my background? Is that my Yep, that one. Um, drag that down. My move tool, click or press V. See, this is what the move tool looks like. Drag and drop that into the image. You can see now how that is see-through. So there's still a little few bits in there, which you can see uh, because we didn't we didn't pick it up enough so I can still work on that so what I'm going to do is turn those layers off and I'm going to try and find, do that again so I'm going to go select color range I'm going to find a couple of those little bits in there maybe go plus might be too much So if you need to, you can come back and add, do a little bit more, but that's pretty much it. Select color range and try and tweak it a little bit. Okay, thanks for uh, watching. Give that a go. Remember with your um, select color range tool, I'll just show you, select color range. You can use, so just get uh, so the eyedropper, that probably needs a little bit of cutting out anyway. If I want to add an extra tone, uh, extra colour into your colour range selection, you can press the plus eyedropper and that'll add a second tone to it. So you can see how I'm adding a second tone. If it's, you don't want that, you go minus and you can minus the tones out of it as well. So you can see how it's taking it away every time I'm clicking. So that's a really good tool to use. So it's all of those three there are what exactly what you use. Go OK, and I'm just going to go Control X. See, that just took out a little bit more. And then you're ready to do the see-through frame exercise on your own. All right, well, I look forward to seeing some of your samples. Please make sure you uh, post some of those on uh, the YouTube link so I can have a look. And um, I hope you enjoy Photoshop. Until next time, it's Anna McCauley. Thank you.